screw that timer. We've waited long enough. I'm done. Done waiting today. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the stream. Hope you're all having a great day. Sorry that we uh, just kept pushing this back and pushing this back. I just, things kept popping up and popping up today. I had work this morning, but we're back. We're here now, um, and we are, are ready to go today. Hope you guys are all having a great day today. We're in uh, Simbit Pilot's World today, uh, Pilot's Life, sorry. Um, flying from Houston to New Orleans. Uh oh, bad FPS, that's okay. Uh, flying from Houston to New Orleans today. We do have uh, Center Online, which, as we know, is my favorite because they get you everywhere you need to be um, from the ground to the ground. So. Yeah, we're in the uh, A320 today with the IAE engines, beautiful, beautiful airplane, and uh, we're gonna get start getting loaded up here so that we can uh, get on our way. IH to MSY, uh, weight and balance. We're gonna go ahead and load the air. Let's just make sure that's what we're looking at. Um, plan 5,000, is that right? Holy crap. No, 12.4. Oh, that's cargo. Okay, I'm an idiot. Okay, yeah. 12.4, 179 souls on board. Well, passengers. Let's go ahead and load with GSX. Get them rolling. Boarding requested. We have our clearance out of passengers here already, too. Started. We'll get to that here in a couple minutes. What is this? You can't really do anything with that. It's fine. <laughs> Um, should be getting the belt loaders up here. Should be getting some uh, fuel here momentarily as well. Open the forward cargo door. Uh, it's opening. It's opening. So you guys can go ahead and just start loading. Why don't you? Worry about yourself. How about that? Okay. All right. Let's uh, also get the Fly Live Studio going while we're at it. I'm going to get rid Oh, it's not even there. So it's perfect. Stay there. Uh, go browser and open this here. Settings, no chat bot. What? Uh, open main overlay. We'll go dashboard. We're going from IH to MSY as United 1647. 1647. And we're going to use it. Copy it. Uh, come back down here. Oh, sorry. I didn't know this was just sitting there. All right, dude. Morning, morning, by There we go. Okay. All right. And we got ourselves a, uh, an overlay. So what is going on, everybody? Hope we're having a good day today. Like I said, sorry for the delayed start, but uh, we are here now. Okay. I'm gonna pull up uh, Twitch as well. We are also live on Twitch. Um, we are multi-streaming on that. So I'm just gonna see if there's, there's still not really many people that tune in over there, but I missed a chat the one time, so I don't wanna do that anymore. Uh, one viewer over here. What's up on Twitch? What's up on YouTube? Hope we're doing good, everybody, today. Hope everything is all good. It's been about... Has it been a week since our last stream? What day is today? Tuesday? Did I stream Thursday? I don't know. Feels like it's been forever, though, but it's good to be back. Um, like I said, on the ground here in Houston. And uh, it's going to be a fun flight on the way over. Uh, let's check up on Vatsim. I heard that Cross the Pond is coming up. Is that facts? Events. Let's see. I think it only... 15, 15, 14. Yeah, it only... Crossed the land. Uh, today... Uh, let's see, Monk on Monday. That's, uh, that was yesterday. See, why does it only give the old stuff? I wish it would give the... 
future stuff. Yo, 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 dog tag gamer. What's going on, bro? Hope you're having a good day. What'd you do today, bro? Um, what is going on with the weather back there, dude? Yo, Jet Jaguar, welcome to the stream. Max Racing, what's up, bro? Good to see you at the home airport. Let's go, dude. Uh, yeah, it's criminal that there's, like, no good sceneries out there for Houston. Unless, am I mistaken? Let me see. Hang on. Uh... Sim Market has one. FS Dream Team has one. Okay, so I could get one, to be fair. Go into the terminal? Okay, hang on. Um, I want to... Does anybody know when there's, uh... What Cross the Pond is? Pond Vatsim? I don't know. It's not telling me. I hate that. Still working. Did my first Delta flight Sunday. Let's go. Yeah, I forgot about that, dude. I forgot you did that. How did it go? Where, where, and where did you go? Oh, they have Cleveland Center up, dude. I could have flown out of my home airport. It's okay. We got to get the, uh, we got to keep going with the Pilot's Life series here. So FS Dream Team IH is excellent. Okay. Yeah. I just, I'm cheap. I haven't gotten it yet. I'm probably going to have to get it here soon if we're going to keep flying out of, uh, Houston here. Okay, wait. Uh, Max wanted us to go to the terminal. Is this... Alright, let's see. Uh, yeah. That's... That's that's the terminal, Max. Fort Lauderdale to Raleigh-Durham? Oh, nice, dude. Would you fly? 320 or 73? Max, how realistic is this? Is this pretty good? Wow. Microsoft spared no expense. They have a little hose there. That's, uh, and a camera facing up or down. What are we looking at here? Sneaky cam there. So that's it. This, this airport's pretty bad too. Terminal E and C are the best terminal. Uh, let's see. Where's E and C? Uh, in respect to where we're at right now. Let's see. Will this one tell us? The main taxi diagram doesn't tell us. Parking gates. 320, got to fly RDU to DCA today at 321. Dang, 321. I feel like that's a little bit aggressive. It's a little large of an airplane for that route, but I like it. I like it. There's our bird. How much fuel do we have? Uh, 66, so we still need our gas. Alright, did I get my iPad out? I don't really want to do all that. Um, okay. We're going to get the weather information. Um, we're squawking 4710. 4710. Turn that on. And the Houston ATIS is 12405. There we go. Hello, airport. what is up, bro? Welcome to the Land stream. Hope you're having a good day. Operation, Dog runway Tech Gamer, right. uh, I thought Aerial so too. We may change it to A320 because of that recent, yeah. A320 or 319. Rowan, yeah, I remember you, bro. I remember you, you tuning in a while ago. Delta. Information Delta, okay. CVR test, fire test. All right, we'll do all that. Hang on. Intercontinental Houston right Airport. Right after DCI-H. Dog Tech. Maybe we're going to have to get some sceneries here together if you have one already. Visibility one zero. 2,600 scattered, ceiling 3,600 broken, 2,500 overcast, temperature 27, 2.21, altimeter 2,990, arrivals expect ILS or area navigation Y runway 8 right, ILS or area navigation Y runway 8 left, ILS or area navigation Y runway 9 -er. simultaneous approach is in use. 
Departing runway 15 left. Runway 15 right. Runway 9er. Notices to air mission. United ramp control in effect. Bird activity within the airport. Land and hold short uh, operation runway 8 right. Area navigation or GLS approach is available on request. Advise on initial contact. You have information delta. Alright, we have information delta. Today. We'll switch to center frequency. Maybe not actually because. This is a 430 Hotel Delta Houston Center. Cleared yeah, to the right Conroe so. Airport. I like C4 departure. Not gonna lie. Can I just Echo meet them? X-ray Yankee. I Lexi then is filed. Maintain 3000. Departure frequency 134.42. Yeah, okay. Squawk 5122. I'll just turn it off. No, I don't want to do that. We'll just leave it back to that for now. Okay. All right. We'll do your. We'll play your game, Max. We'll do your realistic tests. There's your CVR test. The APU fire test. Engine one fire test. Engine 2 fire test. Alright, all good stuff up there. And we're just waiting on... I think they're... Are they fueling currently? No. Does it want me... Does it want me to do something outside for them? Oh, no. They're just loading up still. Connecting. Uh, okay. Let's close the cargo doors. Uh, ground services. Close those up because they're all done there. Shocks and cones can stay. GPU can stay. Okay. They're just going to open them back up. That's fine. Uh, United Ramp Control is a room full of screen and special ramp control moved aircraft across the ramp. Okay, all right, makes sense. I don't think that's, uh, that's not actually in effect here because we just have center online, so there's not even departure or anything like that, so. It's funny, with JetBlue, my last flight was MSY to Fort Lauderdale, and I got hired by Delta and went there to, from there to RDU. Yeah, that is funny, dude. I had, um, I was flying for Frontier and doing a lot of stuff in and out of Denver. And now, you know, you go to United and we've done some stuff in and out of Denver. I don't know if actually we've done any flights out of Denver with that, but the option was there, obviously, with United Hub and Denver. So sometimes those hubs cross over like that. I guess not necessarily that New Orleans is a hub for anybody, but is it a hub for anybody? I don't know. Probably not. Hey, that may be Breeze, actually. It might be a hub for Breeze. So it says we're departing runway 9. That would be lovely if we can get runway 9. But it wants us on the Mugs 4. And we can't take the Mugs 4 and runway 9. Uh, so... I'd like to see what departures go off of... Looks like the Gumbies. That's from 8 left. Is there anything off runway? I think. I feel like the Gumbies. Let me see. Where's it at? There it is. Gumby 3. This is just off of 8. Dang. Okay. It's a Breeze crew base, and what is that? And HU, what does that say? That stupid heart blocks the screen for me. I can't see that. Oh, that's a seven. Dude, why are all these departures off of the one fives? Alright, we'll just we're gonna plan for runway nine and we'll ask him oh shoot, I forgot I gotta do this. How far are we on the loading of the passengers? Uh 71, we got a hundred to go. We got some time. United 1647, is that right? Did I do that right? 1647, yep. Cost index five. And cruising at 290. Um, what did they give me? They gave me 290. We'll take 290 for now, and we'll see. Maybe we want lower or not. IRS and it is fine. And, uh, we're climb maintain 4,000. Um, we're going to, like I said, plan for runway 9. 
and we'll just be ready to switch it if we don't get it um, and just tell them that we don't have so wait these are all the departures that we do get one thing about IH is given that one of the biggest airports in USA we were surprised and quick to check back TSA all under 15 minutes really wow that's good to know honestly I didn't I wouldn't expect that from one of these airports AEX Alexandria 3 departure we could take um, that wouldn't really help us the whatever that is lot we 7 that doesn't help cried 1 that doesn't help it's to the north El Dorado 1 the El Dorado 1 is the closest one to be I mean we're basically going like east southeast Let's see what else there flies a Giffa. Giffa goes north. Gumby goes. Oh wait, it, it it would let us take Gumby. Oh, okay, we can't take Gumby. Okay. All right, let's plan on the Gumby three then. With the does it give us books for gusty transition? No, it didn't give us any of that. Let's see. Gumby gusty. Well, it had Gusty anyways, so I'll just take the Gusty transition there. Um, we'll insert that, and then we'll go MSY. We're looking at the Audad. Uh, ILS 1-1. One, one. The Audad 1. And the approach via from Audad. So this is going to be, I think, kind of awkward. 265 miles. I don't know if that's right or not. Yeah, see? Let's vectors probably to Dawson. Uh, and then Gumby, and then Jay, Spinny, Gusty, Audad, and then straight on the ILS 1-1. One, one. Okay, that works for me. I'm happy with that. ILS 15 left and 15 right are more common. Yes, but considering we're the only people here and uh, Runway 9 is like right over there, we're going to take run, we're going to request Runway 9 anyways. 12.4 on the fuel. I think that's all we needed. Uh, if they're landing eight, le eight right, eight left, they must depart on the 15s. Is that right? Well, the eight has said we can take off runway nine. It said they were using 15 left, 15 right, and nine for departure. So um, we're going to request runway nine. And if they send us over to 15 left, I mean, that's not that big, big of a deal. Uh, it's all pretty close. Still got a little bit to go on the packs, so we're not going to uh, start the APU just yet because that would burn quite a bit of fuel while we're just sitting here doing nothing. Let's see if we can take a look at the Navigraph charts here. Nine is also allowed. Good. I know. That is not the right flight. All right, we're gonna unload that and get this one going. Um, okay. So this is what I was talking about, run why I want runway nine. I mean, that's where we're at right now. Runway nine's a nice just right there. And the mugs four is just uh, off the 15s. So we want the Gusty, what was it, what did I say we took? We took the Gumby, I think. Uh, we took the Gumby 3, yeah. So we'll probably just be, we'll be vectors to Dawson. So off runway 8 left, 8 right, slash 9er. Um, we'll go on a heading of 087 to 600 feet, then expect vectors across Dawson at or below 4,000. So he gave us climb maintain 4,000, top out the done said 16,000. Um, that's departure, but we'll be with center. So yeah, that's about it. Can I unpin this? Get out of here. I don't know, it doesn't look like it worked. That's okay. Yes, quick flight today. Um, just 42 minutes of airtime, an hour and 10 on the block. 
And uh, cruising at 29,000. I'm sorry, what the heck did I just say, dude? Flight level 290, 29,000 feet today. So nothing uh, nothing too crazy today, guys. Nothing too crazy. Should be a fun one, though. Um, yeah. How we doing, Max? We getting any closer to flight school or anything? Also, what episode... Are we up? We're up to eight, I think, right? On the YouTube. For videos. Oh, we're only up to seven. Oh. Stand by one. I'll be back in a couple minutes. No, Max, I did not know that your first lesson was in two weeks. That's awesome. Um, and four stream, four Eastern time streams are perfect for you. Let's well, get them glad. Um, you know, it depends on whether or not I work and everything like that. But um, I can see this being being more of a thing uh, as time goes on here. All right, we got about 40 people to go. Let's go ahead and get the fuel pumps on and get the APU kicking. But that's great, Max. What um, what are they gonna have you in? Do you know, Cessna, Archer. I should say Cessna or Piper.
No smoking signs on. Well, we don't want them smoking. You requested a Piper Warrior, okay. Warriors are nice. Warriors are like a cross between a Cessna and, or like a, well yeah, like a Cessna, like a 172 and an Archer. Um, but they're really nice. Okay, if you bleed and, uh, I guess we can keep the GPU on for now. We're gonna go K M Sierra Yankee. Do that over here as well. Kilo Mike Sierra Yankee. Very nice. Um, and we're going to be in it page soon and then perf page soon just to make sure that we got everything going on there. You might want to get out of there before the storm hits. Uh oh, I'm not going to lie. Didn't look at any weather. Let's take a look here. Houston weather taff. Uh. Nothing crazy on the TAF. Let's check out the weather radar. Nothing crazy it doesn't look like. Uh, okay, let's keep that open there. Almost there on our passenger count. Just a few more to go. We'll contact center for push and start. Oh, let's listen to the PA. Please place your large bag into the overhead lockers. Wheels first. And keep your small items under the seat in front of you. These include laptops, handbags, duty-free and loose items of clothing. If you are seated in an emergency exit row or a front row bulkhead, Yeah, folks from the flight deck, uh, welcome to United Flight uh, 1647, non-stop service to New Orleans. From me and Max Racing up here at the front, uh, we're going to be 45 minutes, wheels up, wheels down. Uh, sit back, relax, enjoy your flight, and uh, hold on, because it's going to be Max's landing, and he can't figure it out, so. All right, enjoy. There you go, how was that, Max? Is that pretty good? Smooth enough, right, Max? So we'll call center for push uh, when it's time for that and request nine and also the Gumby three. Um, make sure they're still online. Mic effect was perfect. Okay, great. I just basically put it in my mouth, so. How many people did that say? Almost 10 people. Let's go, guys. What are we doing here? Hang on, wait. Let's see. What are they doing? He's gone. Dude, this is so unrealistic. You can't even put the tray tables down, bro. Don't buy this airplane. It's terrible. Not worth money. Can you even... You can't even do the vents or like a call sign or the buttons. Oh my gosh, dude. That's crazy. 
I bet the oxygen masks don't even deploy in the ra event of a uh, rapid cabin depressurization. <laughs> sucks. Plane sucks, dude. Don't buy it. Awful. Can't even close a window shade. <laughs> Just about ready to rock and roll here. Um, Oxymax deploying a cabin altitude reaches 14,000. Yeah, that's fair, because that's just, that would be whenever uh, everybody has to at least be supplied with oxygen if it was an unpressurized um, cabin. Do you know the oxygen regs, Max? Gonna have to know those. All right, aircraft is all loaded to go. That's awesome. All loaded to go. Yeah, dude. I'm gonna start trying to stop saying stupid stuff. All right, anyways. Go off runway nine, sink the load sheet, sink the weather. We're good there. Calculate, send that to the McDo. No, not this flaps three crap. Done with that. Calculate that. Uh, send to the McDo. So we got 146, 146, 147, one down 0 0.350 during the flex temp. And uh, all that looks good. Let's just take a look at the fuel numbers. And let's do that while they get us prepared for pushback and departure as well here. Prepare for pushback and departure. Let's get a look at the fuel. I'm sorry. So three, three and a half at the alternate. And 2.2 as a final, 2.4 as a final for 6.0. Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback. 2.4 there is good. You know the last 15 minutes on the Airbus? No, that's, um... So, listen, you're going to be... I know you know these these Airbus and Boeing um, POHs inside and out, but you're going to be flying a lot smaller and a lot less cool airplanes here for the next few years. So, Departure you're going to have to study a lot more boring and lame inserted. stuff like... So you're going to be unpressurized. So the oxygen regs are if you are above 12,500 feet for more than 30 minutes, you need to have uh, the crew needs to be supplied with oxygen. If you're above 14,000 for any period of time, um, the crew needs oxygen and the passengers need to be supplied, need to be offered oxygen. Um, so... Again, I mean, not that they, they don't have to take it, and that's why they deploy it if the cabin altitude reaches 14,000 feet. So that makes sense there. And then at 15,000, everybody needs uh, to be, again, supplied with oxygen at least. I don't really get a 15,000 to 14,000. That's kind of the same thing. I'd have to maybe look that up a little bit, but okay. I guess I should have called them for push first. So let's go ahead and turn off the music, and we will uh, lock in here. Bring up the center freak. All right, we're now at 1647 on the ground at Houston, looking for push and start. Uh, does it have, do we have a gate here? Is there? No, nothing. Okay. At center, good afternoon. United 1647 is on the ground at Houston here with information Delta, looking for push and start. Starting to study PPL stuff soon. Good, Max. Get Next, on that. 1647, Houston Center, push and start approved. Advise, ready for taxi at spot 22. I will call you for taxi at spot 22, and uh, any chance you can get runway 9 and the Gumby's 3 departure for United 1647? Yeah, it's 1647, correction. Uh, advise, ready for taxi at spot 3, and I'm going to have to keep you on the mugs for now. Okay, roger that. Uh, just be advised, uh, the mugs and the and runway nine don't work for us, so we'd have to take the, one of the 15s, so whatever works for you. Yep, spot three. Spot three. Okay, uh, continue push back, and we're going to go nose right tail left. We're going to go ahead and flick the beacon light on. Oh, okay. Release parking brakes, please. Uh, hang on. No, do not interrupt the pushback. Wait, so is it good? 
Is the GPU gone? Release parking brakes, please. GPU's not gone. Oh, GPU's gone. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. All right. All right. We'll, we'll, we will release the parking brake for you. There you go. Commencing push. All engines clear. <laughs> start at will. All right. Go to start them up. Let's turn engine number two first. Okay. Uh, Max, I need to better understand airspace. Can you pull up a section on teaching the basics and crews? Yeah, absolutely. Um, airspace, it's like kind of a lot, but kind of not uh, once you get used to it. It's the weather. The weather requirements in Class G, that's the most confusing thing about airspace is the weather requirements in Class G. Um, because Class G is so, like, different. Typically, it's just, I thought it was engine number two. Spearman 1272, descend via the Toro tree arrival, Houston altimeter, tree zero, correction, Houston altimeter, two oh, niner, niner zero. I thought it was engine number two. You always say engine number two on the Airbuses. Well, woman, I'm checking out. Sorry, I know that there's, the Spearman ATC might be a little loud for you guys, Toro but tree arrival, Houston altimeter, I'll turn it down a little bit, actually. Zero. You know what, because I did have the last guy up really high. Uh, there we go. Let's see this center guy, how he talks. Yeah, that's fine. The last guy was super quiet. And number one on the 320? All right. All right, parking brakes set. Uh... Center course, sir, 5421, clear of runway 13 at Bravo 4. We're taxing the Sterling. So also another service. thing is that um, I have, today I'm using the, uh, the, and I mean, I will be for the rest of time, but I just want to say it just Bravo, to use, just to, I guess, advertise it a little bit more. Not that they're paying me or anything, the I wish the, uh, they were. Bravo Alpha. But I'm using the um, Prodesk Alpha, Sim throttles for the Bravo throttle quadrant, and they are freaking awesome. I absolutely love these things, so would advise if you don't have them already and if you have the bravo always say engine number one ah, i always forget there's so much to remember cockpit to ground we have a good engine start you can disconnect Woo. Dude, can you see it? Can you see the United 777 just sitting here? We gotta fly the 787 soon, dude. I'm, I'm getting tired of not flying a heavy jet, to be honest with you. And uh, I saw that they just added A cars, so I definitely am interested in that. That's the reason why Boeing Starship 2 1 is because the nose was steering is on system B. Ah, okay. 132975, uh, goodbye, Southwest 1596. In their normal braking, okay. Makes sense. All right, available on engine number one. Let's go back to norm, start up, or arm the spoilers, flaps one. Max auto brake. We'll go ahead and kill the APU, and let's get a uh, flight control check. We're going to go full right, neutral, full left, neutral, full up, neutral, full down, neutral, full right rudder, Neutral, full left rudder. Okay, all good to go there. And uh, what else did I want to do? There was... Oh, the uh, trim. That would be nice. Down 0 0.3. There we go. Okay, so we're all going to go there. We're going to keep the perf page up there. Uh, the flight pan page there. And let's go ahead with the taxi lights and release parking brake. Max is uh, three-minute timer. I will do three-minute timer. Is, um, I love the rolling... I'm at idle right now and it's rolling. I love that. Is spot three right in front of me here because runway one one at Golf Tree. It's Plan. not standard taxi routes. I need like a terminal. Uh, golf three, for uh, runway one one uh, it doesn't tell me spot Holy crap, he wants me to call him at spot three. Max, am I spot three is on the other side of the like it's across the bridge, right? Experience 1272, you were cleared earlier to the RE372, hello, welcome to the stream. Okay, so we can descend towards the profile, uh, Spirit 1272. So, okay, so we're getting sent to, uh, we're getting sent all the way over, it seems like. Let me see, I think it is on here. 
Where's, hang on, where's spot three? We'll just call Delta 2551 with Delta pick up our eye on Delta 2551, Houston Center, clear to the Orleans Airport, Gumby Tree Departure, Golf Uniform Mike, Bravo Yankee, Gusty Transition that is filed. Client Transponders BSA, on. Departure frequency 134.42. Ninja Man 344, four, what's up, bro? Two. Welcome to the stream. That's how uh, Houston ramp procedures work. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, we're just going to stop here for now. I think spot three is... Hang on, let me see if I... I'll pull it up on here. I think spot three is all the way across the bridge. Delta 2551, climb via SID. Via the SID, Delta 2551. Delta 2551, read that correct. Call for push and start. Houston information. They go over the bridge and make you hold. Is that spot three? Is that, I believe, we're over here, so... Okay. ILS well, if that's what we right think, approach. then uh, we're going to do that. So we'll just go Romeo, Charlie. We'll just go Romeo, Charlie across the bridge if we can. Southwest 5608 at Salza cleared Arnav Zulu, really one tree right approach. Okay, well, we're going to have to redo some numbers here. So while we're rolling, let's do that. Uh, we're going to drop down and plug away a little bit. Uh, flight plan off runway, probably 15 Houston, left. Houston, He's going to keep me on the mugs. It was the mugs and the gusty transition still. Let's go back to here and go 15 left. Take the load sheet, take the weather, calculate, send it. And uh, pretty much everything the same still on the information. In it page, make sure nothing changed there. We're all good to go there. Okay, so we're all good. All right. Uh, we're going to stay right side here, right side. How's everyone doing today? I'm doing pretty good, Ari. How about yourself? Um, don't have a chart up, but pretty sure spot three is up there by Whiskey Bravo. Okay, yeah, that's uh, that's what I'm seeing here. It's not on the normal taxi chart, but it's on those gate charts that we were just looking at. So that's why I was kind of confused at first, too. Um, yeah, Max, that's how we do it. They go over the bridge and make you hold. I remember going under that bridge in real life on a Boeing 787. Dang, that's cool, dude. Yeah, we got to get a uh, a good... We got to get that FS Dream Team Houston. How much was it? I didn't see. Anybody on Twitch? Not really? Okay. Um, let's see. Also, is my staying right here? Yeah, let's stay to the right. Oop. Um, FS Dream Team. It is... Delta 10 bucks okay it's not bad that is not bad at all we'll probably get that uh on the next one i don't know let's see how much honestly i have no idea how many more times we're going to be at houston i don't think we're going to be there any more times on this schedule no dog tag if you're still here i got a couple turns out of rdu coming up i bid for a, a shorter schedule on this one so that we can do some of these on um that's him. It's like we're doing today and on stream. Alpha, you know, because all those flights on the last Charlie. one were like five hours long. They're like Newark to freaking LA. Alpha. And uh, that's fun. I like doing those long ones too. But, um, you know, I want to do something that I can stream. And this is a good happy medium. There's a takeoff config, test takeoff. Normal. We got the call. So that means that the cabin was ready. Uh, we're all good to go. All right, so we're on Romeo Bravo right now. Spot three. I gotta pin this chart. 
Spot three is right at the end of Romeo Charlie, so we're actually going to sidestep right on onto our chase two dog tag gamer short trips and all connected hubs. I think I do the. I think I usually do the random continue trips. So like it keeps us going. So what? Like, are you in and out of the same airport all the time, dog tag? So this spot three is going to be right at the end of Romeo Charlie and right before Whiskey Echo. So it's pretty much right here. And Sunday United sixteen forty seven approaching spot three. United sixteen forty seven from spot three runway one five left taxi via Whiskey Alpha Whiskey Victor. One five left Whiskey Alpha Whiskey Victor United sixteen forty seven. Okay, so that's just straight ahead right turn and uh, taxi at spot three. on the way there. Delta twenty five fifty one will advise one three. Yeah, I love that. They sound these sounds are so good, dude. Look at that taxi right on the line. Oh my gosh. He's up to Fort Lauderdale at RDU to uh, DCA, I think. Is that what that's supposed to mean? Back to Houston, back to Fort Lauderdale? Okay. I'll take a look at that schedule next time. Um, I don't know if I put it... I don't know if I put it in the episode that I posted already. Right after the stream, I'm going to post episode 8. And then I'll work on episode 9. And I think this... I think this would technically be episode 11. So I think I have episode 10 recorded. Do I? Is that factor cap? I do have episode 11 recorded. So this would be... So what did he give us? He gave us Whiskey Victor. So we'll make this right left turn. It says Whiskey Whiskey. Even though it's not real, well, that's the next turn, I guess. I'm sorry, I'm an idiot. I just missed the sign. And Center United 1647, hold short 15 left at Whiskey Victor, ready to go. United 1647, runway 15 left, RNF to taps, clear for takeoff. 15 left, RNF taps, clear for takeoff, United 1647. All right, let's get our lights on. We're all good to go upstairs. Everything's good there. RNF taps, we got that pulled up. We got the mugs four pulled up. Uh, and we're 4,000 and below to tap, so let's just go ahead and rip her out of here. I guess I can pull up the charts on here, too. I'm just being an idiot and not doing it. Uh, departure. Can I find the mugs for before we go? L. I swear to the alphabet. There it is. Mugs for. Alright, let's go spool them up. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Manflex 60 SRS climb nav auto thrust blue. Little forward pressure on the stick. Dang, those engines sound good. I really got to rip it back here. Holy smokes. Positive ready to climb. Gear's coming up. Oh, little lag there. That's all right. What's 4286, runway 18 right, turn right. Turn left heading one five. All right, 600 feet. Let's go to taps. Off. All right, left heading one five zero. Clear for takeoff. Right, one eight right. Cactus seven zero one. Expect ILS runway one eight right approach. Advise you have information for on Thrust climb. Climb thrust set. Taxi 701, expect ILS runway 18 right climb approach. Nav. Bravo. Let's go ahead and go flaps yeah, clean. Southwest 5608, looking for the landing flare. 13 right. Southwest 5608, runway 13 right, clear to land. 
Airline one three Delta seven ten, ready to check. Loud and clear. Where do you think you get After takeoff, flaps are up, uh, auto brake disarm, norm off, lights are off, gears up, or well, lights are still on. We're coming up to 4,000 here. It's a little platform altitude for us. So we got speed out star, start leveling us off here at four. How's this look, Max? Is this pretty much Houston? Notice you had Flex SRS at blue. The reason why you didn't have runway is because the NOTAM said 15 lock is unusable. Oh, okay, interesting. Uh, well, they gave us climb maintain 4,000. They did not give us climb via the SID. So we're going to stay at 4. Uh, until otherwise right advised. He wants us under 5,000 at bottle anyways, so we're okay there. This is Houston. There's the city. In classic Microsoft Flight Sim fashion, it just looks like a pile of rubble. Or Houston just very underdeveloped. Just kidding. Houston Center, but our contact four tree miles southeast of Keeley. Yeah, we'll keep the timer going. Still hand flying. I'm hoping he gives us something. We got to be above ten. Well, we're going hops. We got to be above eleven at hops. So hopefully he gives us something a little higher here. Jeff Blue 2797, Jacksonville Center offline. Radar services terminated. Frequency change approved. Over here to come, Jeff Blue 2797. 15 minutes west of the airplane. All right. Maybe we'll just request uh, Walker 4286, radar contact, 200 AGL and just right away west actually. Is that west? No, uh, west is that way. Texas 701, radar contact, 14 miles. West is right behind us, I'm sorry, I'm an idiot. Welcome, clear to ILS, runway 18 right approach. Houston fly low over my head. Oop. 6 out, Texas 701 heavy, we had a connection. Check the 701 at Hook'em, clear to ILS, runway 18 right approach. Hook'em! How do you shut that one off? There's a, is there an out horn cut out? At Hook'em, clear to ILS. I'm going to request higher here in a second. Spirit Wings 1272, runway 8 right, clear to land. Spirit Wings 1272, clear to land. In center, United 1647, request and higher. United 1647, radar contact, stay altitude. 4000, United 1647. United 1647, climb and maintain 16000. Climb and maintain 16000, United 1647. Okay, 16000, let's go. No, no, hot contour. What is that? Oh, no out, no horn cutout, okay. We just have to deal with it. Delta just be better. Just don't suck, I guess, dude. Delta 2551 from spot three, runway 15 left, Pack City at Whiskey Alpha. Okay, Whiskey pretty record. much straight out from here. Let's go ahead and kick the autopilot on, and uh, we'll let the robot do the rest of the work. All right, we'll go to... Um, turn the music back on. And we're going up to 16,000. Beautiful. I love these little breakouts. Like, it's not going to be a huge breakout. It wasn't like crazy overcast, but just getting above the clouds and back into the sun. Love it. Love it. It's so beautiful.
Dang. I mean, look at that. That's crazy. I always love the jump seat view, too. Nice. All right. Okay, Max, let's take a look. Uh, since we don't have a whole lot of time on this one, I don't even know, honestly, this cruise is a little aggressive. Um, I feel like 290. Let's see, we're going to hit top of... Well, 16 months for that. One, runway 18 right, clear to land. Top of descent in 137 miles, so we should be able to make it to that. So. But uh, since we don't have a whole heck of a lot of time, let's do. Let's actually do the verse of the day first, um, because uh, I don't want to run out of time for that. I'd rather run out of time talking about sectionals than the word of God. So let's go ahead and get into that right after. Um, we go to 10,000 and turn off the landing. Let's just do 250. Uh, I might. All I have to use is to close unexpectedly. Radar service oh. terminated. Change to advisory approved. Boo. Okay, we'll um, we'll do 25 since he just closed up. Santa Rouge, uh, Can I change my cruise to uh, flight level? All right, we're going up to 250 and not talking to anybody anymore, so let's do it. New cruising altitude. Perfect. Okay. Um, all right, so the verse of the day, Jinxie sponsor. Um, verse of the day, Lamentations. That's an interesting one. Um, I have read through the whole Bible a few times, but uh, I don't remember a whole lot about Lamentations. I do remember that lamentations, I believe just the nature of the word is like a cry for help. So I believe the author is, is writing about, probably about Israel, honestly. I'm not sure, but it's a it's a sorrowful book from what I understand. I don't know, it might be totally capping, but from what that, that's what I am thinking it is. I don't know, I might be wrong, like I said, probably wrong, but oh geez, why is it louder out here? Okay, um, so. Lamentations chapter 3 verses 22 through 23 the faithful love of the Lord never ends his mercies never cease grateful is his faithfulness his mercies begin afresh each morning um, this kind of reminds me of the Lord's Prayer almost a little bit and if you guys don't know the Lord's Prayer I encourage you to memorize the Lord's Prayer because the Lord's Prayer covers absolutely everything our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name holy is your name is what that means so your name is holy you're giving god praise hallowed be thy name thine kingdom come i'm sorry thy thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven so you're saying there let your will be done in my life over what i want let your will be done in heaven and on earth let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. I love that give us our daily bread because when you think about it, you're like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever, bread, great. But your daily bread is your daily needs of survival. Your daily bread is bread, is food, is water, is shelter. And then everything else on top of that is gravy. Like the fact that I get to sit here in front of you guys and play flight sim today is so total like such a unnecessary blessing and that's exactly why i want to use it to glorify god because i don't deserve to be sitting here playing flight sim and there's plenty of people that are laying in hospital beds right now that would kill for an opportunity to take a a320 you know and spend money on this and have a computer good enough to stream but but can't and and i get to do it and i am so unworthy of that but um but that's that's what I think of whenever I think of give us today our daily bread like thank you for my daily bread today like I woke up I went to work like I went to the gym like I was able to move my body like do things that people would kill to have the opportunity to do like I have my daily bread and whenever you think about that and when you think about the fact that what we all deserve like we don't deserve to do anything other than be nailed to a cross and we should be burning in hell but the only reason that we're not is because of Jesus. And so when you think about it like that, it's like, okay, you know what? Maybe a flat tire I got today isn't so bad. 
you know, I didn't get a flat tire today, but that's just an example. Uh, maybe school today wasn't so bad, you know, think of all the people that would die to try to get in school, literally risk their lives getting to school every day in other countries. Okay, maybe it's not so bad. So give us today our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. Um, forgiving those who trespass against us. I mean, how much of us, how many of us don't do that? <laughs> you know, raise your hand, don't raise your hand. But it's, uh, it's, you know, hard to forgive people that, that do wrong against us. I don't know if you guys um, follow that that preacher on Instagram, that uh, Mari, or Mar Mari, I think his name is, something like that. Like he just got stabbed by some guy. And one of the first things that like he put online was, hey, pray for me, pray for my health, but pray for that guy too. And it's like, what? Pray for that guy? He just stabbed you. And it's like, yeah, that's what Jesus would, would do. So, yeah. Um, pray for those who trespass against you as well. And forgive us our sins, man. You know, we sin all day, every day. And if you don't think that, then, you know, reflect a little bit. Um, so, you know, the Lord says that uh, even if you lust after another woman, it's committing adultery in your heart. So, you know, take it easy, fellas. No, nah, but seriously, it's um, we sin all day, every day. So that's a, just kind of, like I said, covering that, that big aspect of sin there, too, in that prayer. Uh, so where was I? Forgive us our trespasses, we forgive us trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, thine is the glory forever and ever. Um, and when you say that, I really I like to emphasize that because it's like, okay, like yours is the kingdom, Lord God. Yours is the glory. Yours is the honor forever and ever. Like really give thanks to God there. And it's easy to just kind of go through the motions when you say that because it's just like it's the lord's prayer you know we've been saying that forever you know before football games like in church whatever like when you really break it down and really think about it it's really special and it really covers every single aspect of of prayer that you could possibly want so that's what i think of whenever i think of this uh verse great is his faithfulness his mercies begin afresh each morning i think of the daily bread you know if you wake up god's gonna use you for something today uh so that's pretty much verse of the day i missed some chats let's take a look here okay go away uh dog tag gamer says remind us that in christ the lord will be faithful um to be there every morning with enough new mercy to get us through today's trouble sin and pain the book is filled with pain misery and the consequences of a sinful and broken world amen exactly couldn't have said it better myself dude very well said max Ray says gratefulness is a big aspect to determine somebody's maturity yeah i agree um i think that whenever you like gratefulness you can't be grateful and anxious at the same time so like you know, you're anxious. Like, I'm anxious about, like, oh, you know, flying and, you know, getting this done and that done and school and money and all this stuff. But then again, man, you think about just being grateful, like, from the basic level of the fact that I'm not just burning in hell right now. And it's like, that's what I deserve. And I'm not doing that. And so that's just like, okay, you know, maybe work isn't so bad today. So, yeah, Max, totally agree. Dog Tag Gamer says, it reassures us that his love is con is constant. And his miracles are inexhaustible. Holy, it's a big word there. Almost got me. Probably did get me. No matter what cha challenges or trials we face, we can find hope and comfort knowing that his faithfulness is great and his love is unwavering. Amen to that. Totally agree. And uh, just like I'm not exactly sure what the verse is, but, you know, rejoice in your trials. Rejoice in your struggles because um, struggles, what is, I don't remember how it all flows, but it's like, you know, trials produce patience patience produces courage courage pretty like you know there's point there's a point there's a reason to your struggles truly um you know a few years ago um you know god left the 99 to find the one and the one was me not that long ago and he found me and brought me in, in amongst the 99 and I say to you that if you're one of those, if you're the one, um, you know, a lot of us here today are part of the 99, but if you're a part of the one, he wants you like badder, worse than he wants us. You know, he wants to bring you into the 99. So let him. Okay. Let's get the uh, altitude to standard there and enter descent data. Why? How much? 87 miles. Okay. We'll get to the descent data here in a little bit. I do want to go over the um back sorry about that I was calling your mother no problem ari welcome back uh rewind it if you missed it we just had a great verse of the day uh flight is going well 
Um, so everything's going good there. We're just going to start going over some navigational charts. We're going to go over a U.S. Uh, excuse me, sectional. Um, so this is... FA sectional. There we go. That's what, that's what we're looking for. All right. I mean, Max, what do you want to know? I mean, there's honestly so much here. And Houston, this is honestly a really good, like, holy Tursas, dude. I've never seen... What airport is that? Beaumont VOR. Where's the airport code? Brooks Regional. Oh, Jack Brooks Regional. Okay, with a Tursa around it. Um, nice work on your CF double I. Okay, Ari. Feel free to chime in. Max is... Um, Max is about to start his PPL here in a couple weeks. Um, so I, uh, he wanted some help on some sectionals. So feel free to chime in, uh, with anything. Max, like I said, what do you want to know? This is, uh, what airport is this? Lake Charles Regional. The basics of airspaces. Okay, Max. All right. Bases of airspaces. So, um, basically. Okay. So we'll start from the bottom. So right, like right here, this airspace right here, where it's just nothing, no circle, no lines, no nothing. This is class G or not. We'll get to the magenta circles here in a second. This is class G airspace. Generally speaking, Mr. Emirates, what's up, bro? Welcome to the stream. We don't have too much longer, so hopefully you um, hurry your butt up. No, I'm just kidding. But um, so basically where there's just green is class G up to 1,200 feet. So that's the standard like class G transitions to class E at 1,200 feet. AGO? Ari, correct me if I'm wrong on that. It might be MSL, but I think it's AGO. Hola, Wolfie. Welcome to the stream. I have a cat that's named Wolfie, and she literally just walked by, so I thought she was saying hi to me. <laughs> but, uh... <clears throat> so, anyways. Class G, it goes up to 1,200 feet. So, when I guess I should rephrase that. Whenever you're looking at this, I guess that's an intercoastal waterway, whatever that means. So, like, whenever you're just looking at the green, it's class G to 1,200, and then class E up to 17,999 feet. It does not include 18,000 feet. Class E goes up to 18, 17,999 feet. The magenta is class E that does not start at 1,200. Maybe I am the cat. Maybe you are the cat, dude. <laughs> um, class E, this starts at 700. Um, so that's around typically like, I don't want to say bigger airports, but like this one has two runways, you know, this one doesn't have the magenta. Um, but yeah, this is class E that starts at 700 feet. So technically class E is controlled airspace. Class G is not. So to be in controlled airspace, you'd have to be at 700 feet here versus right out here. You'd be at 1200. So anyways, that's that. Now, this dashed purple line is an isogonic line. It's a line of variation. So like whenever you're planning your cross country, you'll see it's 30 degrees east. So I think east you subtract from your heading, if I'm not mistaken there, Ari. Um, you subtract that. We Everything I use is up here. Uh, 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 what airport is this? State College. Okay, that's Penn State, so we're to the west of that. So everything I use is, like, right over here, and it's only west, and west you add it. So this is the 9-degree west uh, isogonic line. Um, that's what we use all the time. So anyways, that dashed purple line is an isogonic line, but this dashed purple line, if it's a dashed purple line around an airport that looks like a box, which there's n none in the state of Texas... So, like, here they jot out like this to protect the approaches. Now, where the heck... Alright, I'll just go up north to show you, I guess, because there's just none down here. Unless they're not... I wonder if they're not even modeled on these charts. Uh, I know for a fact... I'm pretty sure Beaver has... Yeah, Beaver has... Yeah, here it is. So, this dashed purple line right here is class E that starts at the surface. So again, right here, well, I guess that's class Bravo airspace. Right here, this white 
or this green is class G that starts, that goes up to 1200. From the surface, 1200, and then class E that goes up to 17999. Come right in here, it's class E at 700. And then go down here, you have purple magenta dash. That's class E that starts at the surface. That's to protect a what? Oh no, what just happened? Why are we so far off course? Hang on, what? Wait, we're not. What's the deal here? Cruise heading? Why are we on heading mode? Let's just go. Can I get direct uh, aw dad, please? That'd be cool. All right, back to nav mode. Are we, where's top of the sense? 48 miles still, so we'll just kind of get ready for that. Um, Audad, MSY, approach, ILS 1-1. One, one. It wants to set Audad at 7,000, 7,000. So we'll go to that initially there. We'll go to low auto break for now. Okay, all right, back to this. Uh, Ari, I don't even know, to be honest with you. I, um, I forgot. I'm, my mind is buzzing right now. Um, but yeah, Max, stop me if you have any questions. Yeah, okay. Class G is 12. No, no, no. 1,200. 1,200, Max. 1,200 feet, not 12,000. Um, class G is... Put us in a hold if you need more time. I might. Um, class G is 1,200. Uh, Ari, my question was... Oh, which one are you looking for, Ari? I was looking for a dashed magenta to show class E that goes to the surface. Um, where's our... There we go. So, coming back down here, there's also Echo Airports. Echo Airports? What? What airport is that? Hang on, we gotta search that. I've never... KBLH? Take me there. <laughs> oh. I'm not gonna lie, I've never seen that before. But that makes sense. So yeah, that's a class echo airspace airport because here you have class E that goes to the surface and here is class E that starts at 700. So yeah, I guess that makes sense. I've honestly just never seen that before. That's cool to know, uh, Ari. Thank you for that. Um, but Ari, my other question was, does, does the class G go to 1200? Is it AGL? It's gotta be AGL because the whole point is like around the mountains too, Max, Class G gets confusing because it's like, let's say you're on top of like Pikes Peak and Pikes Peak is a 14,000 foot mountain. But Class G, been there a few times, sorry, because of the instrument approaches. Yeah, that's why it would be Class E to the surface. So that, it makes sense. I've just, I've never seen that. That's pretty cool though. Um, I've only seen like little cutouts like how I showed you guys at Beaver there. Um, but yeah, 1200 AGL. Okay, that makes sense. So, yeah, Max, we're not even going to get into the mountain stuff right now, but, I mean, basically, like, you have a third... The highest Class G can go is 14,000, I think, maybe 14.5. But... But if it's, it shows the airspace, it's, like, the Bravo, it's MS, MSL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, so like, the big numbers are in MSL, basically. But Class G itself goes to 1,200 AGL, and, like, again, but if it's on top of, like... Like, you look at Denver where Denver itself is like a mile high. So it's like 5,000 feet high. Class G goes to 6,200 there, but it can only go up to 14,000 feet is the highest it can go. So like in an area where there's a 13,000 foot mountain, you know, it can only go up to a thousand feet, essentially, I guess. I don't know. No, honestly, that's a confusing area. If you're gonna fly in Class G over a mountain, just don't do that. That's uh, stupid. Um, okay, so, and then, so we covered Class E, Class Delta airspace. Um, honestly, I'd love to go back up to Beaver because that's a good example that I'm aware of. How are we looking on here? 22 miles, we're okay. I think I can explain all this in, in due time. Um, let's see. Looking for Class Delta. Let's just, we'll just go Beaver. Um, so Beaver here is, it is class Delta and this is, Beaver's a good one because of the Pittsburgh Bravo right here. So basically the dashed blue is a class Delta, um, class G, no, 1200, not 12,000. Like 
max. It's like, I mean, like 12, 1, 2, 0, 0, not 1, 2, 0, 0, 0. Class E goes from the surface if it's a purple dashed, 700 if it's purple, if it's magenta faded, and 1200 to 17999. 17999 is the top of class E, period. I guess not period. Um, because above class A, so at like 61,000 feet, goes back to class E. Um, essentially, so Max, what they're going to teach you is class E is everything. Class E is everything else airspace. So like if it's not a Bravo, a Charlie, a Delta, or Class Golf, or Class A airspace, which is 18,000 to 60,000, um, it's Class E. So, like, space is Class E. So, like, whenever there's commercial space travel and you're cruising at flight level 100, zero, zero, um, it's Class E airspace up there. So, yeah, Class A airspace. Like, right now, we're in Class A airspace here in this, in this flight. But uh, if we would go above 60,000 feet, in our Airbus A320, we would be in Class D e airspace again. So anyways, Class D airspace um, is the blue dashed. Class D airspace is the blue dashed, and basically, to get in here, you need to have two radio communications. You need to hear your call sign back to, you know, Archer 5356 Yankee. You know, Beaver Tower, Archer 5356 Yankee, we're 10 to the north inbound for, you know, with the weather type thing. They say Archer 5356 Yankee... You know, even if they say Archer 5356 Yankee standby, you can go in there because you heard your call sign. Now, that is not the same with Class B airspace. We'll get there in a minute. Um, so, this is a good example of... Nope, just kidding. Uh, this is a good example of Class C airspace right here. Magenta solid. This is not to be confused. Top of descent is soon. It is soon. Yeah, it's like very soon, huh? Yeah, two miles soon. Okay, let's go start down. Um, we'll do the, uh, we'll do all that stuff here, all the calculations and stuff in a second. Um, Class C airspace is solid magenta, not to be confused with dashed or faded magenta. Um, Class C is solid magenta, and it has, this is your first kind of tiered airspace. Um, so this center ring is typically four miles, it's typically like eight miles in diameter, I think. And it goes like to 4,000 AGL typically. How high is class delta? And typically, what do they always say, Ari? Um, like 3,500 feet or something like that, typically. Uh, Beaver's class delta is it goes up to 3,800. Yeah, well, it, it does depend. Like Beaver's goes up to 3,800 MSL. So if you fly through here at 3,900, you're fine. You can go above it, but the reason it stops at 38 is because of the Pittsburgh class Bravo. This shelf right here starts at 4,000 in the Bravo, which you need a clearance for. So, but typically up to 2,500 AGL, right? 2,500 AGL for the Deltas and then 4,000 AGL for these. And then I think it's a five mile radius and then a 10 mile radius. So with this first shelf, it starts at the surface. This inner ring starts at the surface for Class Charlie. The outer ring starts at 2,500 MSL and goes up to 5,200 MSL. Um, Class Charlie and Bravo are the same in terms of you need a mode C transponder and a ADSB out to get into them. But with Class Charlie, it's the same thing as Class Delta, where you only need to hear your call sign back to enter the Class Charlie. To enter the Bravo, you need a clearance. It's Max, how we doing, brother? It's, I guess, it's a little harder to teach than I thought. This is why I don't want to be a CFI. Ari, why aren't you doing this? You're the CFI here. Um, all right, Max, while you get back to me, uh, we're going to do some approach work real quick here. Jeez, dude, going from basic uh, VFR stuff back to IFR is kind of crazy. I love it, though. That's cool. Okay. That's what Flight Sim's all about. All right, let's go. METAR uh, 150 at 13, gusting 20. Yikes. What other runways do they have? 11 and 20. We'll take 11. Nice and long. 
Uh, good breaking condition. Apply the meat tar. 3004. Landing weight is going to be... Um, perf next phase. So it's 150 at 13. Temperature 27. Uh, uh, 3002 on the altimeter. Minimums on the chart 204. More drag, okay, we'll give it half. 204. Um, okay, back to flight plan. It's a lot, lol. Love flying IFR. <laughs> REL, my gosh, dude. Um, yeah, I love IFR. My instrument training was by far my favorite thing as opposed to this crap. Okay, um, the VFR stuff. But what was I looking at? Oh, I wanted my landing weight. Fuel, uh, 140. We'll just go with 142. 142.0. Oh, no, not 142 pounds. Gosh dang it. 142. 1, 2, 3. There we go. Dude, what? What? What is it doing, bro? What? I mean, okay. Whatever. Not like I use this anyways. All right. We're just going to bring up the approach plate on here for ILS Runway 11. Uh, 109.9. Uh, 106. 2000. 204. And 1800 RVR. Looks good. Let's go to 3004 here. Should we enter the hold at all, Dad, here? Uh... I got most of it now. I just need to see it again. You don't... You do not need a clearance for Max... Or for... You do not need a clearance for Class Charlie, Max. You just need to hear your call sign back. Um, whoa. What is this speed doing? Oh, Dad. I mean... Let's get Voodoo at like seven. We might need to hold here anyways to get down. Let's 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 just hold here. Hold. Okay, we'll hold. You've you've uh you've convinced me. Inbound course from Audad is Oof. Zero nine three. Uh zero nine three standard turns were I thought standard turns were left turns. Time, one minute distance. Uh, sure, one minute legs is fine. Okay, insert that. And... Yeah, we'll just... We'll do this. We'll go down to 7,000 and we'll get a 1,000 uh, foot per minute descent. Just so it takes a few minutes to get down there. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Correct me to be two at radio communication. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, so that is... Uh, let's go back to Beaver. What's class A? Class A is 18,000 and above. So you need an instrument rating to go into class A airspace. Um, standard or right? Okay, I always forget that. I'm not going to lie. Thank you, Ari. Um, class A is 18,000 to 60,000 max. That's the flight levels that, um, like I said, instrument rating, mode C, ADSB. What else am I missing, Ari? Anything? Got to be on our IFR flight plan. So, Max, unfortunately, you're not going to be uh, you're not going to be up in flight level one eight zero on any VFR cross countries anytime soon. So we are actually well, we're not in class A anymore. We were, if we were above eighteen, right now. Here, Max, this is a good question for you. What airspace are we in right now? Standard turn, right turn, one minute legs. Yeah, I knew the one minute legs, but I didn't know... Uh, I always forget it's right or left. Pretty much it? Okay, cool. Max, what airspace are we in right now? So we're approaching Audad. We're going to hold at Audad, so we're going to be doing circles like this. Um, We're at... 13, 13,000 descending to 7,000. What airspace are we in? 
Instrument rated IFR flight plan. Thank you, Ari. Perfect. I'm gonna have to put learning airspaces in the title and maybe stick this in my uh, how to fly series too. I love it though. It's what we're here for. Let's see how this hold works too. We can do, so wait, technically, how fast should we be going right now? We're below, or above. What are the holds? It's below six, above six, and above 14. I think we can be doing 260 knots to 265, I think, right now, right? Let me, that's a quick Google real quick here. Let's see. Holding speeds. Yeah, above 6 to 14. 265 above 14. Okay, so yeah. We're in class G. Uh, do uh, do I have a Discord? Ari, no, I don't, but I'm, I've am i been thinking about setting one up because everybody always asks about it. So, well, not everybody. I've had it asked a couple times, I guess, but could set one up. 230? No, 265 above 14. It's between um, 6 and 14. It's too... Well, wait, yeah, no. You're right. We are because we're below 14 now, so we'd be 230 knots. Dang it. It's all right. We're all learning here. Um, Max, right now, we would be in class E because we're above 1,200, except right here it would start at 700. If you do let me know, I'll join. Okay, cool. Yeah, I will. I got to figure that out, dude. Honestly, I'm not good with any of that stuff. So, we'll see. Um, Max, we'd be in class G right now because we're above... T or we're in class E right now because we're above 1,200 and below 18,000. So, that's, that's the reasoning behind that. Does that make sense? Ooh. Those signs have been on. Give it a little speed break to help out here. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Water down the wrong pipe. He was my second guess. Okay. Yeah. I mean, good. That's close. Like I said, it's confusing at first. Um, yeah, if you need help, feel free to reach out as well. I can give you a Discord tag if you'd like. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll definitely... I'll post... I'll post about it. If you follow me on Instagram, uh, I think I'm just flight some cat my underscore or anything like that on Instagram. Um, yeah, flight underscore sim underscore captain on Instagram. Uh, I keep people up to date on there. And yeah, and I'll post it on the on a poll or something here. Nice, Ari. Congrats. That's awesome. Um, I'm waiting on my commercial license. How do you know it's coming today? Does does the IACRA website tell you? Um, and also, Max, what other questions do you have? I mean, this Class B, I guess we didn't really go over Class B very much. So this is the New Orleans Class Bravo. Put a YouTube community post about it, too. About the, I'll put it out about the um, Discord if I do it. I'll try, I'll try to figure it out. I'll try to figure out how to start. Because I, I made a Discord account for my speed break sellout. Okay, put it away. Uh, I made a Discord account specifically for... Uh, my YouTube, so I should probably do that. So, Max, this is the New Orleans Class Bravo. Um, it is solid purple, which is... Or I'm sorry, dude. I can't talk. It's solid blue, which is... Which denotes a Class B. Now, I have USPS information delivery, so I got... Oh, nice. Okay, good. That's nice. Sorry. Right. Yeah, I don't know. It took my private a long time to come in. I hope it does not take my camera. I gotta go get my medical done again too soon. I gotta get my first class medical done. And saw that I was getting a letter from the FAA. Uh-oh. That's that's the best letter you'll ever get. You're good for you for doing your CFI though. I will hopefully never have to do that, but 
yeah, I'm not a big CFI guy, but that's awesome. Um, this is an interesting class, Bravo. You have, I can only imagine these are some VFR corridors. Let's see, what does this say? Transition to flyway, yeah. Okay, so some VFR corridors, it looks like. So if class B has 70 over 20, what's the under 20? Um, 70 over 20, so like right here, so that means that the top of this class Bravo is at 7,000. Your school is forcing you? Dang, that sucks, dude. Um, all right, we're also gonna exit the hold on this turn. Uh, we might do another, we might do another lap in it just to talk about class Bravo a little more, actually. I don't mind, looks good on the resume. It does, it does definitely look good on the resume, but yeah, I agree with that. Um, Max, so essentially the top of this, so you're literally reading it like the top altitude and the bottom altitude. So the top of this segment of the Bravo, and generally speaking, if it's on top, it's the top everywhere. So it's like 7,000, 7,000, 7,000. It's so like the top of this Bravo airspace is 7,000 feet, pretty, like everywhere. It is, it is 7,000 feet. No, there's no pretty much. It is 7,000 feet. This inner ring goes to the surface. This ring starts at 600 feet. 2,000 feet. King Slayer, what is up, bro? New profile pick. I see that. I see that. Yo, yo, yo. We're just talking about some air spaces. Um, so, Max, again, this 7,000, 2,000. So, essentially, Max, you could fly under this. Uh, you could, if you were down at, at 1,999 feet, you could fly under this class Bravo and not need a clearance and not be in the Bravo. But if you wanted to essentially fly right over the airport and go, um, you know, transition through here you either have to be above 7,000 and that's it because you can't be below the surface I mean you could but that uh, is generally not a good thing so yeah I mean that's pretty much class B so anything under is class G uh not necessarily because for a little bit right for 800 feet it's class G or E I'm sorry I know it's probably confusing whenever I do that I just I'm thinking faster than I'm talking um, and I'm an idiot. So, class G would start at 1,200 here versus this starts at 2,000. So, it would be 800 feet worth of class G. Unless, is this technically like a, uh... Conservation area or something? Doesn't say anything about it. It's just, it's just the bayou. All right, so where are we at? So we can proceed inbound. Mm, I probably, we don't have to right now. Let me get, let me get the Alice one one pulled up real quick. Follow you on Insta, I'll shoot you a message as well, probably. Okay, cool. That is fine. Yeah, I'll work on setting that up after this stream, probably, honestly. Um, so yeah, we're 7,000 inbound, 4,000 at Voodoo. So we'll just keep this for now. One more turn in the hold, Max. And then, so I think if we exit the hold now, I think it'll do the, it'll finish this last turn. Yeah, it'll just, well, it'll just take us back to Audet. Okay, so we'll just do that. Need a video dedicated to this? Okay. Maybe we'll, we'll get back into that. Uh, maybe that series of um, talking about airspaces and talking about private pilot stuff. I don't know. I just, I mean, I kind of ran out of things to, to talk about whenever we were doing that okay good max i'm glad that's the point um you know we're just here to help you know i'm here to pass knowledge down to the next generation like i want to be able to be helpful to other people and you know what too i just i just realized that um dude who went from somebody on on uh simbit world went houston to new orleans in a 787 that's crazy um, this also, this doesn't help, this doesn't hurt the pay in, uh, Simbit either. This turned a, uh, hour block flight into an hour flight time, essentially, so we'll take that. Also, what's VATSIM looking like right now? Because I just popped into a hold, like, out of nowhere. I don't know if I messed people up or anything. Where are we at here? All right, there's somebody coming behind us, so we'll hop on. Uh, let's see what this frequency would be here. 
what are we at? Uh, New Orleans approach would be on tower 19.5. So another thing, Max, is if we get rid of this. So where's the New Orleans? CTAF's 19.5. So like that's so like the control tower is that, and it'll also be the C. Well, that's not true. 22.95 is CTAF, I think, right? Ari, is that? Technically, it would like that's the tower, but CTAF would be twenty two ninety five, I think. That's what I'm sticking with. So if anybody's not on this, they're wrong. They're wrong. New Orleans traffic, United sixteen. Uh, 1647 is in the hold at Audad. Proceed inbound the ILS 11 uh, New Orleans traffic. All right, and we'll also set 4,000 and just get a little, I guess, open descent for that. So if it's open descent, I don't know. I think max open descent does what a thousand feet per minute till it catches up with the vertical profile. Is that right? Somebody 4,000 above. Oh yeah, there they are. That's kind of cool. 19.5. Are you sure though? I thought if it was, if it was this, like in real life, if it was, then what is, then what is 22.95? Well, 2295 is what, just Unicom? Unicom, CTAF, it's all the same. Whatever. 19.5 biz. New Orleans traffic, United 1647 has come out of the hold at Audad, proceed inbound on the ILS 11, New Orleans traffic. That's the one on the Vatsim website? Okay. All right. Fair enough. I mean, probably just because it's it's the old, or it's the tower frequency. I think usually on Vatsim, you just use the tower frequency whenever it's, it's whenever tower is closed. But I think it would, I think, I think, I don't know. I could be wrong, but I think in real life it would be that. But I guess like at Beaver, that's just, let me see what, like, what are some other ones? Um, This one down here. So this is, so the star, that star also means that it's, dude, I need to grab my sectional because my sectional tells me everything. I'll just, wait, open descent, max says open descent is also flight level change mode. It goes up or down, unrestricted, doesn't mind the profile. Pitch to speed, essentially managed is VNAV. Okay, 2295 is Unicom. Isn't the same thing. Uh, we are going to. I didn't check on Twitch like at all. That's okay. Nobody would. Delta 2551 entering the hold at Audit. Is that not the guy right above us? We're a little past Audit there, brother. Oh, Voodoo's above seven? I thought Voodoo was at four. Oh, inbound is 4,000. My bad. Whoops. That's okay. Would have been too close anyways. You want manage in this situation? Ah, that's all right. We're already too low. We'll stick at 4,000. We're 4,000 till turtle and then 2,000 to mud bug. that guy at just messed up the whole flow coming to New Orleans
I definitely got to start doing more uh, of these traffic calls on VATSIM. Because I always forget whenever I'm not talking to actual air traffic control. But that's okay. All right. Let's go... Uh, We'll stay here. What's final approach fix? Final approach fix is mud bug. So we'll stay two. Mm, we'll go two. We'll stay two thirty for now. Is fine. And like I said, final approach is mud bug at two. And what else are we looking for? Congrats on passion for commercial and getting past the P one eighties. Thank you, Ari. I appreciate it, dude. My fl the flight I took before, like the day before, I took my commercial check ride on Monday, April eighth. I flew Monday, April or Sunday, April seventh. Sunday was the worst flight probably of my career. Like it was the worst flight I had ever taken, and I was like, dude, I, I was like, the the best thing about this is that it can't possibly get any worse tomorrow, and uh, it didn't. It didn't. I passed. So thank you. I appreciate it. Did, did good enough, right? I remember well. I just wanted to arm approach mode. 19 miles out. Localizer goes out to 18 typically. So there you go. Got it a little early. Um, localizer capture. Let's go. Since we're pretty much uh, selected everything, let's just go ahead and arm approach phase, which already is. So we're good. Always. Yeah, that's how it is, I guess, huh? So go 2,000, start slowing to probably about 200. Refresher the day before as well, couldn't do a P180. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I couldn't do anything, dude. Laps one. I couldn't do anything. I think the only thing, I don't even know if I did a P180 the day before. Better to get the jitters out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right, get them out then before the check ride. Um. The only other thing with that was, what was I gonna say? It was super bumpy too. Cause I mean, you know, April 8th up in the Northeast, like that's one of the only times that it was, it was like one of the first times it was warm. So, you know, it was just super bumpy. Winds were gusting close to 28, jeez. We wouldn't even be able to fly. You know, this traffic United 15 or 1647 is a 14 mile final runway 1 1 New Orleans. I will start slowing up to 180. Slow enough for flaps too. Let's go ahead and hit that. Oh, 35 knots. That's nice. Solo limits 18. I think our solo limits 15. I forget. Our solo limits 15 and like our dual limits might be like 20. Do you live somewhere a little like windier, Ari? Like I'm from the I'm northeast, like it's not necessarily super windy all the time. Gladslope, star, uh, or I'm sorry, Gladslope capture, localizer capture, missed approach, climb to 2000. So we'll just leave 2000 set and uh, maybe throw it a little bit. Well, we'll throw the gear down to try to help slow down. Oh. Phoenix? Ah, yeah, that makes sense. Do you go to ATP by chance? All right, we'll go flaps three and we'll give the speed back. So that way we can go flaps full. Oh, maybe right on the edge of that tape. I love it. That's how we like it. All right, let's go ahead and start the recording so that everybody on Instagram and YouTube can see the replay of my slammed landing. Wind's typically always above 20 knots. Yeah, that's probably why uh, 
That's why your mins are so high. You're probably pretty good at crosswinds and stuff by now, though. We don't really have too much of that. Like I said, our flight school is scared to ever do anything fun. No, I'm kidding, but... No, go ahead and disconnect. Oh, is UAA United Aviate already? New Orleans traffic, United 1647, five mile final runway 11, New Orleans. Aviate. Okay, cool. Very nice. What's your opinion on that? I've heard a lot of mixed things about United Aviate. Never talked to an insider, though. Little right, of course. Correcting. Little low. Sit her down. Oh, baby. All right, we're legal. We're good. Oh, give me left rudder there. Bursts are out. Spoilers are up. Hey, not so good. Reversers away. Man breaks. We'll let it roll. All right, stop my recording this time so I don't. Be stupid and forget like always and we'll go ahead and vacate to the right oh it's good that we went down a little bit extra anyways let's go ahead and get the apu kick in go ahead and start it up and we'll stay in a dirty configuration till we're off here we're gonna be off at golf eight She still wanted to fly. She did, Ari. She did. Sorry, right, we'll forgive her for that. New Orleans traffic, United 1647 is clear. 1 1 on Golf 8. Uh, taxi to the ramp. Have a good night. All right. Make sure. Are we fully off? We are. We're close, but we're fully off enough. All right. Let's go ahead and pick the flaps up. Speed brakes down. Been checking it out, Max Racing. Great flight. Uh, Ari says it's up and down, but that's any flight school. Basically, they fixed all the issues that I've had when going through. Well, that's good. I mean, it's good that they're actively working on fixing issues. Great resources. CGO with United. CJO with United. Fly beautiful aircraft. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, CJO is huge. How does your CJO work? Like, what are the, what are the conditions? APU bleed, and uh, that's all of our lights. We'll, we'll take this one. It's at like a 45 to us right now. LS off, VOR is off. Just turn the radio, or the thingy move is off. We don't have a line here though, that's fine. Jesus is rough. All 
Alright, we'll just go ahead and stop it there. Set parking brakes. And get the lights coming off. And we just got... So we have the AP bleed on, so we're going to go there. Shut down the engines. And that's fun, actually. I forgot that we were doing this on Simbit low-key, so we can check out how we did. Let's go ahead and submit the flight. Uh, actually, no, real quick. I'll bring it over here, and we'll take a look at this together. All right, so we'll go ahead and submit the flight. There's our hold. That's that's exactly what it looked like. Uh, basically, Ari says basically we have to fly with either their 121 or 135 carriers. You get 1,200 PIC. 1,200 PIC. Ooh. Then float through straight to United when your seniority number is high enough. That's cool. Code 7700 in Phoenix. Really, dog tag. That's interesting. What did you guys do out there, Ari? What happened? Somebody was just training. They were just messing around. All right, let's check out uh, logbook. We got a 100. All right, nice. Um, so, yeah, good on everything there. Negative 92 on the landing rate. Uh, maybe bounce it. I feel like that was gracious. I don't know. Not too bad. All right, good flight. Uh, next one. Accept my friend request in Simbit World. Yeah, no, all right, I'll do it right now. Did I not? I I accept everybody. It was one of the flight. It was one of the flight academies here. Oh, okay, I got you. Oh, there you go. Gotcha. All right. Um. So schedule. Um. I don't know if I talk, dude. I'm screaming. All right, hang on. We gotta get inside. We gotta shut this APU off. Go ground power. Kill the bleed, kill the APU, kill the beacon. Surprised it didn't take off points for my beacon. Um, so we're going New Orleans to Chicago next. Came in late, W flight. Thank you, man, appreciate it. Appreciate everybody who stops by as always. Um, but yeah, these are the next few flights are gonna look like here. I mean, even these short routes are freaking long, dude. Three hours, 47 minutes, four and a half. This is the next one we could maybe stream. Newark to Raleigh-Durham. That one wouldn't be too bad, probably. That might be fun. Um, but yeah, we're going to Chicago next from here. Two and a half. That isn't awful. We might be able to do that one. Uh, then over to Salt Lake. Salt Lake to Newark. Newark to Raleigh-Durham. Raleigh-Durham to... Or, or, I'm sorry, Orlando. Chicago. Chicago to Vegas. Vegas to Houston. So end everything back off in Houston. Um, I think what I'm going to do is if by the end of this schedule, we don't have any more news on the 777, I'm going to buy the 787. And we're going to fly the next schedule on the 78. If we do have news about the 777 and it's like a couple weeks out or something, then we will just wait and fly that. So that's going to be the plan. Um, but yeah. I mean, hope you guys all enjoyed. Thank you for that, Max. That was a lot of fun. I'm glad that Ari stopped by too and helped me uh, formulate words and full sentences and stuff. That's always nice. Always need help doing that, so that was cool. Um, and yeah, thank you to everybody else who stopped by too. Like I said, that was a fun one. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll just catch you guys next time. Max, uh, I'm going to work on making the Discord as well, so we can talk a little bit off stream about any kind of uh, questions and things that uh, anybody has, and uh, Ari and anybody else in there would be a great resource to to help out. So keep Del applying to Delta no, Dog Tech. Low key, final, final, no, final. dude, I don't want to fly for Delta. I want to fly the triple seven and the seven eighty seven, and Delta has neither. So. Uh, until the A350 comes out in Microsoft, I'm probably going to stick with either American or United. But, um, yeah. We got some we got some interesting news coming up here in a couple months, too. But uh, I'm just going to leave that there for now. This um, flight sim is going to look a little different. We're going to go a different direction with some things than probably a lot of people will be expecting for the next job that we're going to take, so... Um, anyways, I'll leave it at that for now. 
I'll work on making the Discord. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Peace. Thank you.